Okay, I think let's uh, start. Uh, we were talking about uh, VHDL and we had... Yes, please, Akshat Gupta and Karthik. Any issue? So we had talked about the types of objects uh, there were two kind of objects we had talked about signals and variables third is constant and uh, all the three types uh, uh, or all the three objects had types so we had talked about variety of types which were possible now when you are doing any uh, kind of an operation you need various operators depending on what you want to do so we will talk about what are the all operators which are available in VHDL. So uh, this is the list of uh, variables. Logic operators, relational operators, shift operator, adding, sign operators, and uh, multiplying operators miscellaneous we will see what all are possible in this logical operations you all know all the logic operations uh, even if not all almost all are available and or nand nor xor x nor not all the basic functions are available so you can do bitwise operation on it you can even define for vector and uh, then you can uh, write your own functions, how to do it even on other kind of data. This is a, some, a, some simple example. I don't think I even need a mention of it. You all are smart enough to know it. Okay, so they have to be of the same type and bit. Now, these are some of the relational operators. Relation, relational operators are required to check the condition. If this is less than, equal to, not equal to, less than, greater than, greater than, equal to, or any kind. So, this is not equal to. This one is... slash equal to is not equal to less than less than equal to greater than greater than equal to so these are the available six relational operators and you can see that and uh, we can declare our own type for example four logic level and uh, the four logic level chosen here are 0 1 z and also u which is uh, undefined so four logic level u is less than four logic level z. Okay. So um, see, what does it mean is we are trying to say that this is the least number and this is the biggest number. So even four level, uh, four logic level, which is a type of the kind enumerate, which we have defined we can apply the operators you can see uh, if a is less than 10 a, these are very simple ones this is what is a typical of the kind 0 1 numeric integer real all that you can always check no big deals but you can even define and then use the enumerate type the first element is supposed to be the least element and the last element is supposed to be the um, uh, biggest element. And you can do relational comparison between the elements within the type. Now, in shift operations, you have variety of shift, op shift operations. Logical, arithmetic, rotate. Now, uh, I am sure you will have some idea 
but uh, I think I need to tell something more. In logical operation, whenever you are doing shift left or right, let's say this is the number, whatever number of bits it is. So when you are doing shift left, so you are shifting this side, which means this way your data is moving and this empty location is filled by zero. Okay, in shift it is filled by zero. If it is shift right, the first element is uh, filled with zero. When you are doing arithmetic shift, okay, arithmetic shift left or arithmetic shift right, then it makes a difference. If you are doing arithmetic shift right, even then, so if let's say this is the number, so if you are doing arithmetic shift, this number is taken as a signed number, okay? And what it will do is if MSB has one, it will copy one, and if it is zero, it will copy zero. So if you are trying to shift right, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here, and this value is copied. So what you get is one, zero, one, zero. So this has gone here. This is how they have shifted. This is discarded, but MSB is copied. Okay, whereas if you are doing arithmetic shift, left okay yes yeah, shift left arithmetic then msb is discarded and zero is entered okay on lsb rotate is slightly different that you don't discard any bit but you change the position so if you are doing rotate left so that means your bits are shifting in this direction but this bit is not discarded, but this goes and becomes the LSB, okay? Similarly, if it is rotate right, so your bits are moving this way. And so on. And this bit becomes your most significant bit. So nothing is lost but the bits are rotated okay so every every operation had has its own significance arithmetic operations are used at times for division and multiplication um, this rotate application is even used in your hardware design where you want to give for example turn to uh, one by one device so uh, depending on whether there is a requirement or not a register can store one zero and the uh, it can keep shifting the values to see who needs uh, now uh, next turn next turn whether required the protocol is given or handshake signal is given or access is given and if it is zero access is not given and we move to the next element and we keep uh, rotating the data to access various devices. Now see here, uh, there are two examples. One is shift left logical. So you, you have the same data and you are doing a shift um, left logical. So what happens is this is, uh, but uh, shift left two. So you are shifting left by two positions. So these two are discarded and these five are these five locations and then you fill in zero on LSB side. Now, if you are saying rotate by two, rotate left by two, these two will come over here. So first one and then zero. So this one zero gets appended. So this is that one zero and these are the five bits which are the result of shifting. Okay, so that is how uh, 
uh, uh, the you can do various shift and rotate operations adding you have three operators plus minus and concatenation now plus and minus are known to you concatenation are used to kind of attach for example see uh, you can have two bit vectors or two character strings and you want to concatenate them see here there is a string abc another string def so if you say uh, my another string s3 is uh, s1 concatenation s2 so s1 contents will be placed then s2 contents will be placed and it becomes a single string so this string is a b c d e f this can be done for big vectors very well and at times it's very useful when you are kind of testing your system applying binary vectors then there are as usual sign operators to represent the data sign whether positive or negative so you have plus and minus both types are available now multiplying operators this star is used for multiplication is known to you slash is used for division this also is known to you then there is one um, operator which is modulus and another is remainder okay so modulus and remainder operates on operands of integer types you can't have uh, uh, the uh, real numbers uh, for this it can be at the most integers only and the result is also an integer so mod gives you a quotient and uh, remainder gives you the uh, obviously the remainder after the i think uh, we we can just see one example Let's see yeah remainder you you will very well understand you are doing a divide by b now if a is uh, remember a and b are integer because the remem uh, remainder can only be applied to integers and when you divide an integer by another integer the result also has to be integer so a divided by b will also give me an integer so for example if a is uh, 13 and b is 3 so you are doing 13 by 3 division so you are getting here 4 okay and 4 multiplied by b which is 3 is equal to 12 so a is 13 so 13 minus 12 is your answer so a remainder b is 1 and i know because 3 to, uh, into 4 is 12 and remainder will be 1 so uh, this can be directly applied and is quite useful at many times these are few more examples mode you will remember i said quotient so if you have 7 mode minus 4 the quotient will be minus 1 and obviously the remainder will be the remainder will be find out it will be 3 so uh, then there are two more operators which are available one is absolute and another is exponentiation and you know both the operators absolute means you are talking about the magnitude so you can say abs uh, for example a so even if a was a negative number so 
ABS A will give you only the magnitude which is always positive. Exponential is the power you know. So any numeric kind uh, operand can be there. For exponentiation, uh, you the left hand has to be an integer or floating point and exponent is only an integer. You can't have a real number as exponent. This is the limit over here. Now we will talk something more on signals or I can do signals later detail because I want to tell you how to write the driver. I think I'll use whiteboard and tell you how, how to write the uh, drivers for the signal. Because every signal you would recall has events associated with it. You have two things tagged to it, the value and time stamp. So what time, what value, what time, what value. So you can schedule a whole list of futuristic values with the signal. Okay, so we will see a bit later how to write the drivers for it. Let me do some uh, more basic things so that you can get started. Signals and delays, uh, drivers and delays, I'll take together. Variables also I'll take along. Variables is nothing great. You can only declare variables in uh, your uh, sequential area, which is within the process and use within the process. That's it. Yeah, I think um, uh, let's complete the behavioral code and so that we are able to write some codes. So what are the sequential statements available in VHDL? Now remember, sequential statements can only be written within a process. Everything else is concurrent. Only a content within a process is sequential. So following is the list of sequential statements. One is variable assignment statement. Okay, signal assignment statement. Uh, we can do some details wherever required. Variable assignment statement, you know, you have a variable on left. This is the destination. This is the variable assignment operator. And here you can have expression. Signal assignment statement, again, this is the operator. Here is the target signal. And here you can have a expression which uh, generates the value to be assigned to the signal. It could have a delay element as well. Now, uh, the Wait statement is another important thing. We will talk about wait statement in some more detail. When you want to wait for something, you don't want to do anything unless something happens. You are waiting for something to happen. You can introduce a wait statement. Now, uh, this uh, directly was not available in C, but uh, you could do something similar using various loops. Um, the task which is by weight statement, but weight is very compact. If a statement is known to you, it is same as what you had in C. Case statement is again similar to what you had in C. Loop statement, uh, you have variety of loops over here. So we will talk about what all loops you can make, while loop, for loop, known to you, something similar to C. Then there is one next statement, uh, which is not there, I believe, in C at least, C++, I am not sure. And then exit is uh, the similar what you had in C. And there is also a null statement. 
for a particular condition or for certain time you don't want to do anything you can have a null statement now we'll go a bit then these are few more uh, sequential statements report statement assertion statement they require some time you know, spending on them i'll do it then there can be a procedure call which is sequential procedure over here and a return statement also can be possible now let's see with some examples variable assignment statement i already said you have to have a variable target and this is the fixed operator and then followed by an expression it can only only appear within a process so you will declare the variable count of the type integer if you have done so you can have count taking the count plus 1 you can have this weight we will come later but since it is only a weight followed by all colon this is unconditional weight it means now it is going to wait for ever infinite wait statement so we will see where do you need this kind of a statement now signal assignment statement i had said you have a signal the signal assignment operator followed by this is one of the uh, timing or delay model every sig signal assignment statement has to have a delay model which we will do after sequential models what are those delay models there i am only mentioning over here the two delay models are transport and inertial by default it is taken as transport but if you want to use inertial model then you have to explicitly write inertial okay default is transport what is the difference between the two we will talk about a bit later then you will have a value and you have an optional after time expression after time expression means for example after 3 nanosecond you i can say 1 after 3 nanosecond then uh, i again this is what is written in curly bracket can be repeated any number of times so value after so many nanoseconds so you can do multiple assignments at various times but at least one assignment has to be there this is this value is mandatory this within square bracket means optional and if you are not mentioning a model it is transport which is taken and then this is again optional to write a time expression and you can have these kind of assignment any number of time this is what is the syntax which says so square bracket for optional and curly bracket is you repeat in groups so you have a whenever you want to put in one more it has to have a comma value after time expression and because the last one will have a semicolon so semicolon is mandatory over here okay so you this comma is only a separator okay so this is one process which is written and within the process you can see next slide it is b takes the value of a after 10 millisecond so this is just one value assignment after 10 millisecond so it will create a driver which we will talk about how the drivers are created now let's come to the wait statement there are three kind of wait statements one is obviously a infinite wait without any uh, condition but there are three possible conditions one wait on sensitivity list so you can define here various signals so for example i say wait on a so whenever a will have an event this statement uh, will get 
uh, over or it will keep waiting till there is an event on a as soon as event on a means there is a change of value on a so as soon as the value of a changes it will come out and will start executing the rest of the code you can have even multiple signals uh, assigned in the sensitivity list second conditional weight is on boolean express expression wait until a boolean expression so i'll come with an example uh, what does it mean wait for time expression which means wait for 3 nanosecond wait for 5 second or whatever you can give a time expression and uh, it will wait for that time so whenever wait statement is encountered the execution is suspended okay and execution resumes based on the condition so when we say wait on a b i said that whenever a changes or b changes the uh, my again execution will start this is with the time stamp um, wait for 100 nanosecond so uh, it will keep waiting for 100 nanoseconds see here wait for zero nanosecond so this has no effect it is for delta delay only see until is something like this wait until a is equal to b so uh, as soon as this statement is encountered your execution gets suspended but it will keep track on the values of a and b so at time instant whenever a becomes equal to b okay this will be suspended okay and uh, this will be over wait will be over it will come out and it will start doing the next task you can even have uh, multiple weights uh, or these three conditions which you can put together so wait on carry or uh, this one you can see this is what wait on clock for 20 nanosecond so what does it mean is if clock gets an event before 20 nanoseconds then immediately this wait will be over and execution will start but maximum it will wait for 20 nanosecond if nothing happens on clock for 20 nanosecond it will uh, stop the suspension and will start executing so the maximum weight is here 20 nanosecond see combining three weight on carry until sum is greater than 100 okay for 50 millisecond so 50 millisecond is the maximum waiting time and prior to it it will wait on carry if wait on carry means carry changes until some some should become greater than 100 and then it should wait on carry and event on carry this is uh, till then it uh, the process will be in suspension as soon as sum is greater than 100 and or and carry there is an event on carry before 50 millisecond uh, the it will come out of it or it will wait till 50 millisecond and then it will come out of it if the statement is exactly the same what you did in um, c or c plus plus so if boolean expression then this else if boolean expression then this else you can have last sequential statements here it's important that we close and if as well there we used to have brackets and bracket closure means the if statement is closed here we have to write and if there is not much difference so i am not taking example of if because it's known to you case statement again is 
known to you case discrete expression you have to have an expression which gives discrete options and uh, then you can put your choices okay and you can also have a last choice which is um, if nothing of these choices then what to do that can be put so all the choices that can be defined over here and you work you can't leave uh, any option undefined in case statement because it will map on to your multiplexer okay so if you want to do something for only two options then for others maybe you can write null or if nothing else so you can see how much has been coded because whatever you code as a uh, case statement this is similar to switch what we did in uh, c so this statement uh, basically maps to a multiplexer and then you can put a wait statement on all the signals there are two things what you can do one is you have put a wait on here and then if you are doing so you you can check that process does not have a sensitivity list okay you either you can have a sensitivity list over here or you can write a waste statement at the end these are equivalent okay whatever is more convenient one can do it then the loop statement i know loop statement is not very typical for you it is a unconditional loop it can also have a label so loop is the keyword you can write any number of sequential statements within it and it will keep doing this for infinite period unless depending on sequential statements if you have somewhere a sequential uh, statement which says exit then only this loop will exit okay else it will continue it is a kind of a infinite loop now this is a conditional loop while condition loop if this condition is true this will continue to loop as soon as the condition becomes false the loop stops and you come out of the loop then there is a for, for loop also which is of the kind we used to have in c the initial value and uh, there used to be a step on or the incremental value and the final value defined here you have a for again loop variable like we used to use their i in range so you have to define the range over here and then loop so uh, syntax is slightly different intent is the same so syntax again here uh, in c most the things uh, just end by a curly brackets but here you uh, just don't have curly brackets you have to write and loop followed by semicolon so everything begins and ends so see a loop within a loop there is l1 loop with two variable assignment statements a is equal to a plus 1 and b is assigned a 20 value and there is within it there is a second loop which is also a unconditional loop if b is less less than a star a then see what to do exit l2 okay and you complete the loop and you assign b value whatever is the logic we are not worried b minus a if it is not exiting then we are assigning a new value to b and uh, so we, this loop is infinite only when it exits will come out of this l2 and we will exit l l1 when a is greater than 10 okay so something you can do in uh, define your logic and you can write it similar example for 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 loop for a in 1 to 10 loop okay but now here 
the auto increment is not defined so increment has to be defined within our process so see so it is the same example using it so where is it loop was on a in 1 to 10 and uh, where is the increment gone there is a mistake here um, either a uh, right a is defined to be a integer fine i think somewhere we would have defined a as integer Va variable a integer so the first value of that integer in this loop is assigned a value 1 when we say 1 to 10 yeah so the first value of a is 1 the loop executes when the loop ends and it comes back again the next value is assigned so it will keep assigning all uh, integer values one by one so one two three and until it reaches 10 and thereafter the loop will stop because of the auto definition of the integer so elements are defined from 1 to 10 and they auto increment the values if i want to jump i don't want to do for example uh, for 1 2 3 i want to do it for 1 3 5 7 then I have to increment the value of A later in the code. Now see uh, here the next uh, is uh, does nothing but it only asks the loop to go to the next iteration. Okay, so leave rest and go to the next iteration and you can put in a conditional one or unconditional one since it is a square bracket it is optional you can even say loop label next means next iteration of which loop so you can say l1 or l2 maybe it appears within l2 but you may say next l1 so l2 it will exit l l2 it will also exit the current iteration of l1 and increment the value of the variable and go to the next iteration in the loop if it is conditional or for if it is unconditional even then it will go to the next um, iteration of the loop it will go to the beginning of the loop and start doing again so next can only be used within a loop exit statement is again and the syntax is similar to next and this is also used inside a loop and what it does is it totally exits from the loop and you can put a condition when you want to exit the loop maybe you put a infinite loop and you can exit the loop by the condition over here or even if it is a for loop and you want to exit in between depending on certain condition you can put it and you can write the code so some examples null statement it does not cause any action okay so i did tell you uh, when to use it for certain options within the case statement if you don't want to do anything because you have to define all cases in the case statement all the possible values have to be written within it so if you don't want to do anything for certain options you can say null Yeah, report is a very useful statement to write messages and keep telling you uh, where you are or even you can have 
um, various errors and warnings being communicated through report statement. So this displays only displays the messages and takes some actions uh, in certain severity levels. So report followed by a string expression. And then you have to state the severity and a severity is the keyword and you can define the severity level. This is optional. You can have four kinds of severity levels. One is a note, warning, error and failure. By default, if you do not write the severity and the severity level, <coughs> it is taken only as a note. So whenever you will, uh, this statement will be encountered, the whatever is the string expression written over here will be displayed on your monitor. So for, uh, for example, which you used to do uh, screen print, print F or something like that, statements, S print F, print F, Okay, so you used to debug your code at times or putting those messages. So same, uh, we can put report statements to check whether we entered a particular loop or a, a location in the code or not. And what are the values uh, that also can be displayed. Okay, now I'll come to note warning error. What do they mean? Now see, here I'm using a report statement. If clear is equal to Z, then report signal clear has high impedance value. Okay, so you know uh, that uh, this is what has happened. So maybe this gives you some debugging option. Now see, if clock is not equal to zero and clock is not equal to one, then report clock is neither zero nor one maybe you used a tri-state logic for your code and clock also is in tri-state defined as a tri-state value but for a valid action it has to be either zero or one so if it goes uh, if it is neither zero or nor one then it is not just a note there is a problem so we are giving a severity level which is warning so after the expression severity warning this could come over here as well it can be in the same line or it can be in different lines that is what is the beauty of vhdl unless semicolon appears that statement has not ended maybe i write it in five state uh, lines or one line it doesn't make any difference okay so this is kind of warning you should look into it why it has happened this has something fishy then there could be uh, error of the 